Hi, welcome back. You're watching Hollywood Goes Green, a bite-sized TV. I'm Ed Begley, and I'm joined here by Bonnie Reese, my dear friend, the CEO of BMR Consulting Group, who specializes in strategic advice and education, the environment and issues impacting women. Welcome, dear Bonnie. Thank you, dear Ed. Being here back. on Earth Day with Ed, I'm a happy person We today. go back like Similac. We go back. <laughs> <laughs> we go back. We go back decades. That's right. You were, a you were a three-year-old back in 1988 and, and when we met. you were an adorable five-year-old. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll, I'll stick with that story. It's a good one. So how are things now, Bonnie? Where are we at? Uh, and please uh, tell people some of the wonderful stuff you did where you're in California government there. You were there working in Sacramento doing great things with Arnold. I hope a lot of people know that Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of the greenest governors we've ever had. He did more yeah. things for the environment than anybody I can think of. He really did a wonderful job on climate change and many things. Well, I have to say, as a lifetime progressive Democrat, you know, I knew that Arnold was not your typical Republican when it comes to this. He was someone that always respected Teddy Roosevelt, one of our first conservationists, right. um, and understood what it meant to be a Republican in California, a state that's uh, coastline is important to us, clean air is important to us, tourism is important to us, and of course, having grown up in the beautiful mountains of Grand Austria, right. uh, he had a love for the outdoors and nature, and that's what it, what it comes to. Um, I, we, Ed and I go way back, because um, when I, I started as a lawyer, but then I gave it up, I saw, the, I saw the, a better way, and the better way was running significant nonprofit organizations that impact policy, Yes. and we did Earth Communications Office together. For years, did wonderful yep. stuff, got great environmental messages into TV shows and movies, and did lots of stuff to spread the message about what was sustainable, what was and, and people back then, they thought, what kind of crazy talk are they talking <laughs> now about storms flooding in Manhattan? This guy's crazy. Right. This Intense Jeremy's hurricanes, yep. And, and it's all come to pass. Wildfire season that goes year long, yep, yep. exactly. It's, it's all, all come to pass. all the stuff uh, that was talked about. It's all happening well, now, sadly. The, uh, sadly. That's what we were saying right before we began this is how, you know, 30 years ago we were hearing from the scientists projecting ahead, and it sounded like a science fiction story to yeah. us. And now we're actually, sadly, seeing it come to pass, which is why we're so grateful to heroes like our Ed Begley, who uses his celebrity to get the word out, and to Bite Size TV, who uses their power of the media to get the word out to people about how important this issue is and what they can do. You know, I was lucky. Ed, Ed, is, a, Ed is a hero and an example to all, an inspiration to all, about the power of one person, what you can do with your own life to reduce your carbon footprint, um, and as well as what he does in a macro way to get the word out. But I had an opportunity, and it was a remarkable uh, opportunity in to government. work in government to work as senior advisor to the governor of California, the eighth largest economy on the planet. Right. right? And California's had a decades and decades long uh, history of uh, of environmental leadership. Uh, we're proud of our state for that. Yes. You know? um, and it was uh, important. We recognized that uh, addressing climate change was one of the more critical things we could do, not just because it's an issue that could impact all life on, on the planet as we know it, um, but also because if we're looking ahead to care about staying in the new global economy, it's not just important for our health, the health of our family, and the health of the environment and all life. It's important for our productivity and the future of, of the global economy to be able to be hip and savvy to this. So, you know. You know, what's so interesting, I also a progressive Democrat, but I'll tell you, my dad, Ed Begley Sr., was a conservative that liked to conserve, like Arnold, you know, yep. and Teddy Roosevelt. I mean, we turned off the lights, we turned off the water, we saved strings, saved tinfoil. He was a son of Irish immigrants, my dad. He had lived through the Great Depression. So all this stuff that I learned from him is what led me to the first Earth Day, 1970. He died within a few days of the first Earth Day. Wow. So I started doing a lot of this stuff to honor him as much as anything. What I quickly learned was that it was also good for my pocketbook. That's right. Because I did right. in the right order. I did stuff I could afford. I'm a fiscal conservative. So I went, hey, I can't afford solar panels now in 1970. I couldn't afford them until 1990. But the first 20 years, I did the cheap and easy stuff. At each turn, Bonnie, I saved money. Yeah. You know, everything that I did that was good for the that's environment, right. good for my pocketbook. And the same thing that's happening with businesses. Businesses that are caring about more energy efficiency and better HVAC and better lighting and, and everything that comes with looking at being smart with the new technology, they're saving money. So it's, it's not just good for the individual pocketbook, it's good for business. And the other thing that's interesting, Ed, and that's what I wanted to say to people, because sometimes it's so easy to get depressed 
right. and you see what's going on, right, with uh, fires and the floods and the and and and, and all the impacts of climate right. change that we see, and you know over six billion people on the globe and all the issues we have, plus our day to day issues of trying to have to get a job and pay the bills and everything right. else that we deal with. But I got to say, the power, and you and I have seen this. For decades, the power of the one. Power that of PSA one that the you power did. of one. You know, I was senior advisor to the governor of California, right? And I've got to say that I can't tell you how many times we saw just individuals who cared about things coming forward with ideas and innovations that really made legislation happen and made research happen that made policies possible. You know, so California is uh, is leading in targeting reductions in emissions. Um, it's leading in telling all the utilities to meet a renewable portfolio standard. Right. Uh, it's leading in all of that. But honestly, uh, too many of our leaders follow and don't lead. Too many of our leaders will check the polls. Too right? many weather vanes and not enough compasses. But because they're weather vanes, even though we're sad, they should. They wish we wish they were better leaders. That's how important it is when the citizens say. This matters to us. This is important to us. Because when enough citizens feel that way, then our political leaders will act. Like we did in, in the LA area with the uh, American Lung Association, the Coalition for Clean Air. We, back in 1970, we decided we'd do something about smog. Here it is, these many years later, we have four times the cars in LA, millions more people, right. yet we have a fraction of the smog. We all did that. That's you and right. I did that. That's probably. right. Everybody did that together with catalytic converters on cars, combined cycle gas turbines, spray paint booths, all that stuff big and small led to cleaner air. Not If we just held the line on smog with four times the people and millions more cars, we'd go, damn, we're good. Yeah. We didn't. We pushed it back, pushed it way right. back. And we can do that. Ozone depletion. We've shown that we can do things on a global right. scale. That's right. We've got to right. set to it. And, and, and again, the other important lesson that I think that, that I want to inspire people about is the interconnectedness and how coalitions working together make it happen. Right. Individuals make it happen. Business leaders make it happen. Academics, researchers, policymakers, all working together in California is led to us having this remarkable leadership on this issue. Um, and we're getting ready, Ed. Right now, I'm running the USC Schwarzenegger Institute on Policy. Great. It's an opportunity for Arnold to continue his fights for a lot of the policies he did during his two terms as governor, including fighting on climate. And that's one of the things that we're addressing. And we're getting ready to go to Sacramento in September, which we're hoping Ed will be part of this. I'll be there. Where we'll be at the EPA building. So the leaders of California will be gathering to discuss how we can go to Paris in 2015 as the UN gathers all regions of the world to address climate. And that's happening, Ed, on the regional level. Because while people are concerned that there never was a world treaty among nations, it's OK. Cities, states, provinces, regions waiting. of the world are acting. We're doing it. God bless you, Bonnie. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for joining us today. Stay with us here. We've got more green goodness coming up on Hollywood Goes Green right here on Bite Size TV. Thank you, Ed. Bonnie Reed. There's a question that has been plaguing me my entire life.